Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2016. Brought to you by AWS and its ecosystem partners. Now here's your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to theCUBE's uh, broadcast of AWS reInvent 2016 here in Las Vegas. Uh, getting towards the end of our, uh, I guess it's day two, day, it was the keynote for day one, uh, but happy to welcome to the program. Uh, first of all, we've got a practitioner on the program, which <laughs> I'm always uh, super excited about, especially yep. near and dear to my heart, uh, a networking guy. Yep. Uh, Keith Schaefer is a network architect with a uh, redacted uh, Fortune 500 national food distributor. Uh, Keith, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for being here. Uh, and we've got Ramesh, uh, Pragaran, uh, who's a, a VP of uh, Product Management and Marketing uh, with Viptela. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely, thanks for having right. us back. Uh, Keith, I have to start, uh, I, I know you can't talk about, uh, you know, you, too much about your company, but just tell us a little bit about kind of the scope of your role, what you do, and how, how that cloud thing fits into, you know, your world. We've got sites all over the country, and as we try to get out of our data center and into the cloud, we had to struggle with how do we connect all of our sites to that without the single point of failure, without that choke point. With Viptela at a branch, we can then extend that into a Viptela router in the cloud and have that kind of connectivity just like we would have with the data right. center. So, so we're definitely going to get into the Viptela stuff, but first of all, some of your statement there, are you talking about you know, closing down data centers and moving more no. to public cloud? No. Or, you know, how, how's that work? It's new functionality. It's uh, value add, it's uh, new marketing, new sales, uh, new uh, markets that we're getting into. So it's, it's increasing the role of the company, increasing the footprint. Yeah, so did you get to hear the keynote this morning? I did not. Okay, so you know, let, let me put the premise in front of you and, and see how it resonates. So Amazon says, going forward, we're going to be having less data centers, we're going to be putting less gear, mm -hmm. you know, nobody wants to buy hardware anymore. Yep, yep. Uh, you know, Welcome Embrace, welcome to AWS. Right. Uh, you know, how, how's that resonate with your business? It's exactly the direction we're going. Okay. Yeah, we're going in that direction. We want to create the, uh, the environment to scale. We want to be able to be agile, flexible. We want to be able to move wherever the market is and we're not going to be able to do that with a data center. We need Amazon for that. All right, so R Ramesh, I want to pull you into this. So, you know, we've had the opportunity to talk to Viptela uh, a couple times at uh, that other show that was actually in Vegas That's this fine. year. We can mention it was VMworld, so, uh, you know, big ecosystem, but uh, boy, this one's pretty impressive Thank too. Uh, explain to us how, uh, you know, Viptela fits with AWS. Absolutely, so if you look at the SD-WAN space itself, <coughs> initially it was all about cost arbitrage. How can I take private circuits, public circuits, wireless, mix them together and have ubiquitous connectivity? Over the last year or so, we have seen a tremendous shift in that model. Um, cloud is becoming a centerpiece of that discussion, right? And especially with infrastructure as a service like AWS, as Keith was pointing, lots of customers moving in that direction and so naturally the question is, how do I extend my wide area into the cloud, right? Today there are lots of suboptimalities in how do you access from a user sitting inside a remote site or a branch, traffic gets backhauled all the way up to a data center and the cloud is a part of the data center. Now, customers have said, hey, that's very inefficient. Why is it that I need to go from San Jose to Virginia to access a, an AWS site that's sitting right across the street from me? And so naturally, unless you make the cloud part of the wide area and extend the wide area into the cloud, you won't be able to solve those problems. And that's really where we see the opportunity. We were really thinking about what is it that we will talk about at, at AWS and every single customer that we spoke to said, hey guys, this is a huge play for, for AWS in particular. Sorry, so Keith, you were starting to talk a little bit about Viptela, but why don't you bring us back to kind of the, the problem statement. Uh, you know, what was it that, that led you to look, uh, what, was it SD-WAN, was that, you know, uh, that, did you know that you wanted SD-WAN, or uh, what, was there something specific that you were looking for? It was a combination of things. We had a bandwidth issue, we had a, a scalability and growth issue with applications. We wanted to get into the cloud and get out of our data center. Um, it's more cost effective, we can be more agile in terms of capital planning, and we could deploy more in terms of what we were giving to our customers. Uh, we need a solution on the network side that allowed all of that to work at once. 
we didn't want to make this one investment more than once. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'm trying to focus in on it. It's like, did you be like, oh, you know, I, I knew I had some WAN issue, maybe it's WAN optimization, maybe I could go to one of the big guys and they can solve it. But you know, what, what funneled you down to you know, choose Vipella? Security, yeah. ease of deployment, and the fact that we have a partner in terms of support and ongoing growth that we simply couldn't get anywhere else. All right, uh, it, it, is that pretty typical uh, you find? Is, it, you know, is security kind of one of the things that's differentiating you in this space? Yeah, the, the trigger points are multiple, right? One, invariably there is a high bandwidth application that's driving the need for somebody to look, go look beyond their status quo, right? So that's invariably number one. Um, the second one, the larger the customer, the more acute the pain point is with respect to security. And the third piece of it is really cloud, and cloud here being both AWS like infrastructure as a service and at the same time Office 365. The number of times we have heard customers say, O365 breaks my van. I mean, if I had to count, I would be a millionaire, seriously. <laughs> so it's, it's really a, a very interesting topic that multiple customers are looking at because they need to get that deployment right, right? And so the trigger points are multiple, but it all kind of hones in on bandwidth, security, cloud, right? That's kind of where it all comes yeah, together. It's interesting, Keith. I mean, I look, look back in my career, uh, and you know, one of the challenges for, you know, I'm doing anything mobile, doing anything remote, go back to the XSPs in the 90s through you know, all of these things that have led to cloud, it's like networking's one of those choke points. You know, just it, getting enough bandwidth, you know, really having the responsiveness has been a challenge. Um, are we getting to the point that we can actually solve like these networking issues? I mean, we haven't solved the physics problems of you know, making light go any faster, so you know, we're, 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 is network a problem for you or is network an enabler for you now? With Viptela and the ability to have different kinds of transport brought in, network really has stopped being a pain point for us. Uh, we're able to do Office 365, Salesforce, and extend into Amazon for development, internal applications, and customer-facing applications, and do so without having to worry so much about the network. That piece has now been taken care of. All right. Uh, can you speak a little bit about just kind of your experience with with Amazon. Do you use more than one public cloud, or you know, uh, you know, how deep is adoption? If you can share, it's um, uh, multi-region, multiple availability zones. Uh, we go pretty deep in terms of um, in terms of the security groups. Uh, we're U.S. based, so obviously we're not looking to go into global regions. But being able to have something on both coasts for high availability be able to scale and grow. Um, we're at the point right now where we realize how much we can't do with the data center that we can with an Amazon cloud. Yeah, and from the networking side, things like VPC or Direct Connect, are you, are you leveraging those? VPC, but with security, and the Viptela add-on to that allows us to have a common set of control and protocols and an understanding from a support environment and from a security standpoint as well. The security team is familiar with what Viptela brings and extending that into Amazon allows us to trust Amazon that much better. Yeah, uh, so Ramesh, networking came up a bunch uh, you know, this week, Amazon, uh, everything. I don't know if you saw the James Hamilton presentation last yep. night, but it's like, they're doing their own chips, they're 25 gig, they're doing all this. Still, I, I mean, I don't see it as overlapping with what you know, you, you, your, your company's doing. Um, what do you think about networking in, in the Amazon ecosystem these days? Uh, absolutely, so I think that's kind of the, the last pole or, or the last problem to solve in the ecosystem of things, right? So compute storage and then followed by the network. <clears throat> now certainly AWS has done a phenomenal job at automating quite a few pieces with respect to the network, bringing in security groups, having communication across multiple regions and whatnot, right? The part that multiple customers such as Keith are trying to solve is how do I come from my site into AWS, right? Because AWS has done a phenomenal job at optimizing connectivity across multiple availability zones and so forth, but if I have a geographically spread out footprint, how do I access it from my location into AWS? And AWS is not one location, it's geographically spread out, right? So now you have to really optimize for connectivity. It goes back to the direct connect argument that you just brought up, right? Our customers are looking at can I go over internet over a VPN technology? Can I use Direct Connect? Can I exit out locally at my branch or my site? Can, do I need to go to my DMZ? Do I need to go to my carrier neutral facility? So the choices are actually evolving very well, but the underlying guts to connect everything together is, is really what we're providing. 
So, Keith, the last thing I want to cover with you is, uh, you know, sometimes these changes can be difficult on kind of the organization. It, it's really encouraging to hear, I mean, you know, networking team and cloud look like they go hand in hand. You know, how do those fit together? What lessons have you learned going along? You know, what would you say to your peers about, you know, how they should uh, address these kind of things? I would tell them, don't go too fast, take your time, and understand the organization and the data flow that goes into that cloud and how you're going to use that, how you're going to bring that back into your environment, and what are the things that you're concerned the most about? Is it security? Is it just connectivity? You know, but take your time, make sure you get it right. Yeah, now I want you to clarify something because I used to give presentations talking about networking and I would talk about how the networking in enterprise uh, moves by the decade. You know, it's like, oh, we ratified 10 gig in 2002 and you know, by 2012 we had, you know, reasonable adoption. So you say move slowly, um, you're not talking wait a decade <laughs> to do something, right? No, I'm not talking about years, I'm talking about months talking about take some time, figure out how this takes, because it's not just about moving into the cloud, it's connecting that cloud back into your organization. Yeah, don't just swipe a credit card and go, you know, run off and do something, you know, actually plan, talk to some people. This, this uh, is a piece that like allows that. us to bring this Amazon and our company together in a way that I don't think we could do anywhere else. All right, Ramesh, I want to give you the final words, uh, kind of big takeaways from the show, uh, the things you want to leave us yeah, with. Yeah, absolutely, so I think, there are multiple solutions that AWS provides in order to optimally connect into AWS. <clears throat> and there are also complementary technologies that you need to use in order to connect from your site into, into AWS, right? And so in, what I would leave people with is, when you're looking at that model, you kind of own, need to own both of those endpoints, right? Because it's not about just, do I have a pipe to get out there? If I have multiple paths, how do I choose the most optimal one, right? It could be based on loss, latency, jitter, a whole bunch of things. What we have done is actually we have moved the wide area into the cloud, which means we own an instance inside of a VPC that resides inside of AWS, and we protect all the assets and all the applications residing inside of AWS just like we would protect if it is inside a branch, right? And so we, we want customers to think like, hey, my, my AWS location is not an extension of my data center, it's actually an integral part of the wide area. And once that happens, then traffic starts to flow really, really freely, and the possibilities are endless. Well, Keith, really appreciate you sharing your journey of uh, you know, where you've gone and where you're going. Ramesh, thank you for giving the update and for bringing a great customer uh, to, to, to talk with us and our audience. And stay with us, we'll be given a few more interviews here uh, as we have wall-to-wall -wall coverage from AWS reInvent 2016 in Las Vegas, 32,000 people. You're watching theCUBE. <laughs>